I know. I'm shirtless, okay? But there's a good reason, and it's because I'm gonna deconstruct this huge piece of cardboard. Now the reason why I'm doing all this is so that I can make pants out of cardboard. And not just any pants, y'all. Korean hanbok pants that are supposed to match a cardboard puffer jacket that I made last year. And I'm gonna do it with my shower head because I don't have another water supply or a place for water to go besides the drain. So I'm gonna be in the shower, peeling this thing apart, layer by layer. So yeah, I will show you the process now. Oop. The cardboard I'm working with today is 4 by 6 feet, and so I need to start by taking one of the 10 pieces out and putting it into my shower. Taking all these things out was such a mess, honestly, and putting the cardboard in was even a bigger mess, girl. Like, it did not want to fit, but thank god the cardboard was like malleable and bent a bit, because I finally got into the shower and was able to use the shower head to start wetting the cardboard. The reason why I'm wetting the cardboard is so that the glue between the layers starts wearing down, and if the glue is gone, girl, then the separation starts happening. if you wanted to go to the Fisher Museum. Oh, Fisher Museum? Yeah. I'm down. Hello. After I got the cardboard piece looking like this, I dragged the soaking wet cardboard into my room and started peeling it off layer by layer. Now this did require a bucket and a mop for this wet ass cardboard, um, but afterwards I was so grateful because all the layers were pretty much intact for the most part, and so I was able to use them for the next day. The next morning was actually a mess because I was late to a gallery visit. I'm visiting this gallery because this is where I'm going to show my work in March and I had to take a look at the space and just understand what the limitations are for installations. On the walls, there are actually a lot of drawings because a lot of the classes at USC were tasked to draw on the walls and make them fun and fresh. So I did that. It was a fun moment. But yeah, this is me literally having a breakdown um, for how big the studio space is. And just to give y'all some perspective, I have to fill 1,000 square feet with my art. I know, kind of cray cray. What's up, y'all? What's up? Today I'm in the studio. It's literally 10 p.m. So I'm here. I'm gonna gesso this huge canvas and then the plan is to go to the ceramic studio right after do some etching into my little pot, my little vessel and then I'm gonna come back here and do another layer of gesso on this giant canvas We'll see what the vibe is If you actually couldn't tell, this backpack is quite plump big, quite voluptuous and that's because I have a huge can of gesso in here a huge ass can so, also I don't look good, okay? I don't, I'm aware of it. Y'all need to come for me in the comments or anything. This is a no judgment zone, okay? Girl, girl, what the fuck? What the fuck? Last time I was in here, I tried to take out all the screws and leftover staples that were in the wall to make sure I have a flat surface to work on because a lot of the texture from the background will show if I paint on top of it. So I'm gonna try to gesso a lot more carefully. Girl, there's a line 
in the middle of this damn wall, okay? And if I paint over it, the line's low-key showing. So I don't really know what I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna try my best. For this piece, our professor actually tasked every single person in class to make a vessel two feet tall, y'all. Two feet! In one class period, in one sitting! Now originally I tried to make the vessel go straight up, but you know what, like most things in life, straight was not the answer. And so it went bent, it went kinda curved, naturally. And I decided to work with it, I made it a bit more abstract, I pushed the form a bit more. Of course it's not perfect, but that's okay. And then I decided to etch on some tigers from Korean folk uh, mythology. And I decided to push that even further by adding some vegetation in the background. And you'll see I'll also add another tiger on the vessel. Hey y'all, what's up? It's the next day, I went to my art history class, my communications class, and I also had a couple meetings um, with different people for some special little projects that might come soon. And now it is currently 4.42, and that means I have maybe 40 minutes of sunlight left. So I'm gonna try to bring out um, some pieces for a cardboard project. I know, I'm continuing the cardboard puffer jacket that I made over a year ago, and to date, it's still my most talked about piece. Um, not only just like online, but also throughout my professors as well. And so I'm gonna make the pants to them. Who could have seen this coming? I made a shirt and I'm making pants, okay? It seems like I'm a sellout. Maybe I am, but I really need to get this done for the show that's in March. And that's crazy to say because there's almost 50 days left, which is really, really difficult to think about because I have a lot to get done and I have over... <laughs> Like five, six pieces that are huge to make. Um, so we'll see how that goes. I already deconstructed the cardboard. I think y'all saw a bit of that. And now I'm going to cut out the pants part of it because pants are important. Duh, duh. When I document projects on social media, I really like to buff it up in terms of aesthetics when I document things. 
which means using a good camera, you know, um, going to the studio so that there's good lighting, good documentation for the photos. But for a project like this, I can't take it to the studio like I did the last project because I'm not taking a sculpture class, so I don't have access to like those resources anymore. But in kind of a weird way, I think this is just more relatable for other people because not all of us have these like fancy studios and can't make great artwork in great spaces and facilities. And this project in many ways is giving more privilege to underprivileged materials like cardboard in the art space. So for me, it's almost like kind of a little parallel to make this piece of artwork. That's not to say that like fancy studios aren't helpful. They're really helpful, y'all. But I'm just saying it's not impossible to make things that you think are cool in spaces that aren't always given the privilege to be seen. So with that being said, I literally just finished the pan. It is literally 1.41 a.m. y'all. I have to get up at 7 tomorrow because I have an interview for like a marketing thing. Very fun, very fresh. I'm very grateful to have gotten the opportunity, but it's just crazy to me like doing so much art and then having to shift my brain back to like the corporate world. Like for some reason, when I go back to the corporate world, I think this does not align with what I want to do in the future. I need to go back into art. And then I go into art sometimes and I'm like, wow, this is actually pointless. I need to go into a corporate world to make an actual like difference. So my brain is just spinning right now. And it's crazy because on top of art and this stuff, I'm on Final Cut Pro right now editing a vertical version of probably some clips you already just saw of me constructing the puffer pants out of cardboard and I'm making this contact preceding my show in March so that everything works out timeline wise for the content, the actual art itself, and audience reaction. And on top of all that, I'm also trying to organize this huge collaboration project between a bunch of different creators. And it's going well. I don't have to do much at all, actually. I just need to do a check-in or two to see what's up. I don't know why I even mentioned that, actually, in this video, but that's something fun to look forward to. And I think April is when it launches. Well, all these things are really, really good for me. Like, I'm very grateful to have these opportunities. It's just, like, a lot to think about because I'm, I'm just taking on too many different things at the same time, and my brain literally cannot function. It literally cannot function. I'm so tired. But I need to record like this voiceover and I need to see if this new version of the video is actually better or not. Okay, the saturation's a lot better. Also, it's crazy inception-ish. I'm already thinking about how I'm editing this video, so I'm screen recording the content on my phone so I know I can like do this like little orange background thing that I can edit into this YouTube video. My brain is just so fucked. <laughs> it's the morning, y'all, of course. Um, and I'm uploading the first day of the Puffer Jacket Pants TikTok. I don't know if people will like it, to be honest, because, well, it's a year later since I did the first one. I haven't posted on TikTok in like two weeks, so I'm pretty sure the algorithm literally fucking hates my guts right now. But we'll see what happens. Um, I hope people enjoy the series. I have no idea, but I can't even think about that right now because I have to get ready for an interview. So I just shaved actually. Still look like crap, but that's okay. Later that night, I went back into the studio and I was working on this huge canvas and I had to do the underpainting. So I got out my little tin can, my little tin pot, and I started pouring water into it and then mixed in red acrylic paint. Now usually when I do underpaintings, it's a very muted and cool color. And I found that it made my paintings a lot more dull because I was comparing the brightness of a color to this very dark color. 
um, which made no sense, babes. So I'm trying something new. I'm using a very vibrant red color and adding some texture to everything. And I'm doing this so that my bright colors look bright through and through until the very end of the painting. And it's not because of some trick of the eye bullshit. Hey y'all, what's up? Um, I'm not sure if y'all can tell, but I'm in the studio. I've been working on this seven foot painting. It's actually seven by six feet. Um, so pretty big canvas, and I'm trying to do this life size slash more than life size, if that's a thing. I'm pretty sure it's more, it's mainly life size. It's like, it's almost like I'm dabbing, which is actually really embarrassing. I just did it, I went over with red acrylic for the underpainting. I'm just trying to explore my body, in kind of this landscape space. My past couple paintings have not included backgrounds, so I'm really trying to push myself to make a fucking background. Cause dead ass y'all, I cannot do that shit. It's like my weakness. I can't do it. I hate doing it. I hate thinking about backgrounds. I literally just wanna like use a reference photo. So that's what I did. It's embarrassing because y'all kind of like, oh, what did you reference if it's like a self-portrait? You know, like how did you get this image? Um, I literally had to take this photo. I did take a photo that was artsy, you know, it was tasteful, and it's my body. <laughs> <laughs> 